All right, Albie, all sorts of new stuff happening around here, including, <sighs> including, but not limited to. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is um, Tommy from New Hampshire's, the computer that he gave us. This is uh, going to replace the one that I'm using right here. But it is up and running. It is cleaned and ready to go. It is organized. I just have to download. It has a, a Taco things. Gigante Champion sticker. My Taco on it. Gigante Champion sticker is on it. That's correct. Let me see. Can I see that in that shot? I am a champion, as you know, Alice. I've heard that. Um, your old bay socks are hanging up over you. Yes, you got me these nice old bay themed socks. They're very nice. It's a great. De- who knew that? Is that the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General that's in that? That's Dollar Tree. Well, Dollar Tree. Get yourself it's some actually old... the dollar twenty five treat now though. Yeah, right? it is. Get yeah. yourself some old bay socks while you're there. <laughs> they also have a few do other Do they have any other seasoning they socks? Do. <laughs> well, yes. They also have I think Apple Jacks socks. <laughs> so once your uh, legs get back to human size. <laughs> does this get back does this go on the food show more or this show? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we gotta do the food show. The food show died. We in the tried of the food to do show. the food show this morning, but then we had a call from the school nurse instead. One of two school nurse incidents that we had, um, <clears throat> that we had today. Yes, one was a kid sick, sick kid. One was a tick, which is pr- from my. Uh oh, is that a salt light? You rebuked me about your salt lights, and they're not even on. I just turned them on. Viciously lashed out at me to the point that were brought me to tears. I just turned them on, but that's not what it's about. It's about I can't get your camera working. Is it somehow unplugged? Uh, yes, I can. No, is it? Probably. Do you want me to walk around there and plug it? Oh no, it's plugged in. It's white. I mean, it's the lights on. That camera? No, that one I don't see. But I never see that. Oh, hang on. Well, it's not working. Okay, I'm gonna get up. You can say something. Talk about how you already knew about Derek Chauvin. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, so you were asking why we're not talking about the Derek Chauvin stuff, which, like, clearly George Floyd was not. It's this, it's that cord oh, no, that goes that way. Goes under, under your chair. No, it doesn't. It goes that way and into that. It does? Yes. It goes into this? No, see that thing that's hanging right oh, there? That thing. Oh, oh. See, it's connected to it down there. Oh, so so this goes to your computer. Okay, yeah. yeah. How about this? Is that the sound of a new camera found? Yes, it found it. Hey. Okay, there we go. <coughs> so Derek Chauvin. Okay, now you moved my camera. That's not anywhere close to where it was. Thank you. This? This is a, I, okay. How's that? It's not. What was I, which way was I going to go? I'll just do it because I can see where it's pointing on the screen. So it's not, it's not something that you can do without looking at okay. what you're what it's pointing That's towards. That's good. Okay. I think this is the best start to a show. <sighs> Lucky you, we're doing a show today. Why are you upset? You're so Samuel tonight. You should be nice. Okay. Um, so the Derek Chauvin stuff, what I didn't know about Derek Chauvin... The guy who apparently didn't kill George Floyd is – I didn't know that Floyd was saying that he can't breathe even before he was on the ground. Um, I think I did know that – or I, might, I don't know if I knew that the, the medical examiner said that it wasn't Floyd who killed him. No, the, the knee was not the cause of death. But, I mean, there was no way – obviously, the guy, the guy was railroaded. He was going to go to jail. Yeah, and and this is not none of this is new revelations. This is all information that was out during the trial. None of this is new stuff. Even like the video, I think, with Don Lemon talking to the jury, that's not new stuff either. So you're right. That's old. I don't know why it's all out now. That why like we're rehashing it again. Like obviously they were going to send the guy to jail. They just were. It should be proof to everybody that. It doesn't really matter in the United States of America whether you're guilty or innocent it, because the people on juries are so freaking dumb that if they hate you politically, like, this is where this is going, right? Right. That's what they're hoping for in Georgia is it doesn't matter whether Trump did it or not. What matters is that they get the right jury in there and they just want to convict him of whatever, right? Same thing that they did with the grand jury, with that psycho who was on the grand jury, too, Right. Who was all over TV talking about how she wanted to look Trump in the eye and yes, swear yes. him in oh, and totally. that lunatic. 
right? So, I mean, jury of your peers doesn't mean that anymore. And no. I mean, I've seen some people talk about this, that it's really important for conservatives to try and get on juries, because for the most part, most people try not to get on juries. Yeah. Um, except liberal activists who have nothing better to do other than try to convict Trump for stuff. They try to get on juries. Oh, oh absolutely. But so, you know, some I was reading someone, I think it might have been Cernovich, was saying, you know, like, conservatives have a responsibility to try and get on juries, even though it's a huge pain in the butt and inconvenience if you, like, have a job. So that, you know, because all these cases, it matters. You know, if it's anything from putting petty criminals away for stupid little stuff because that's, you know, who's running amok on the streets and causing all this other chaos versus, you know, if it's like police involved shootings, whatever it is, if it's free speech stuff like the Turtle Boy stuff, any time there's an opportunity to be on a jury, conservatives should be trying to do it. You can see on the camera there my old bay socks that Tom hung on the lamp. Oh, nice. Um, That's great. See, it makes you so happy. Um, oh, so, um, anyway, yeah, that's why I'm not, like, that excited to talk about the Derek Chauvin stuff because there's nothing new yeah. happening there. I mean, like, I I assume the case is going to be appealed and stuff. Um, I assume so that that's going to happen. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, at some point, there needs to be a total unraveling of 2020. The but at some point, too, it, like, doesn't matter because it doesn't matter to the left, too. Like, it, they yeah. treat, even if, even if you were to seed them, the George Floyd one, or there are some that are bad, like, um, what's the guy's name? Is it Eric Garner in New York? The loose cigarettes guy? The one that the yes, police yes, tackled because yes, he yes, was selling yes, single is. cigarettes to people, yep. right? Like, that is an egregious case. Yes. Never should have been arrested for that. It's right. a stupid law, right? Whatever. E even if you seed them, the bad ones, they're still going to come out and tell you, like, that this guy who was wrongfully convicted years and years and years ago, that it was okay for him to be trying to choke out a cop on the side of the road and the cop shouldn't have shot him, like, as he was trying to kill him. Right. Would you, Ben Crump is working on that one now. I know. As so, well. so that's why I say, like, there's no point in giving them any ground on any of these because it doesn't matter. The Michael Grant Brown thing is total BS. You know, Trayvon was not killed by a cop, and you know these are the same people who went right ahead immediately and and codified into truth that Jesse Smollett was mugged by a couple of MAGA people in Chicago, right? Or <clears throat> you know, Bubba Wallace, right? Right. So. But the point is, and now here's another in Detroit. Here's a, an, an example of the opposite. You know, this woman, um, mm -hmm. Samantha Wall, yep. who was uh, the death of Detroit synagogue president, Samantha Wall, listen to this, was not motivated by anti-Semitism, according to current evidence obtained by Detroit police and federal investigators. 40-year-old Samantha Wall was found dead outside of her residence of the uh, yada, 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 yada. While, this, while at the scene, police officers have observed a trail of blood leading officers to the victim's residence, which is where the crime is to believe to have occurred, Detroit police said. Detroit police uh, James White released a statement Sunday afternoon stating that the investigation remains ongoing, but no evidence suggests that crime was motivated by anti-Semitism. The investigation into the death of Miss Will remains ongoing at the time. No evidence of anti-Semitism. But here's the problem. is like they, this guy's not in custody. Right, they don't know who did it yet. So yes. how do they know whether it was motivated by anti semitism? It's inc incredible. Or not? What the person does that just mean the person didn't leave a note on the body saying, yes. "By the way, I did this because I'm really anti-Semitic." But there's like crazy. So we talked about it briefly last night, but I want to reiterate it because um, it was during the chat chat section when we were listening to Leslie's message, mm -hmm. um, and. I know some people do skip out before the chat chat as the chat chat gets started. So maybe not everyone heard me talk about this, but, um, you know, we talked about it more, um, the, you know, on the Connecticut radio today as well. But basically there was this Harvard Harris poll of, um, about all kinds of topics, but you know, Harvard Harris is a serious polar and, um, pollster i guess is the better word um but you know ta asking people if they thought the um attacks in uh in israel were justified right the right? massacre in israel by hamas was justified right so you know 
they asked every uh, everybody of all these ages and the age breakdown was so fascinating for this poll of saying was this justified or not where you know the oldest group so like the 65 plus group they asked them nine percent of them Mm -hmm. thought that um the attacks could be justified um where? That's still a big percent. Well, yeah, that's like one in ten people. One, so one when, in we, 11 when, when it people, gets down so. to Gen X, my people, forty-five to fifty-five, it's twenty-three percent thinks the attacks are justified. Yep. It was a good day. Yep, fifty-five to sixty-four is eleven percent. Forty-five to fifty-four is twenty-three percent. Uh, thirty-five to forty-four, so my generation, it's thirty-nine percent think it's justified. Which is effing amazing. We're talking about everybody knows what happened. Right. It was a massacre. Kidnapping, rape, torture, dismemberment. Uh, They're at the point of arguing over how babies were beheaded and yes. if that really counts as beheading. Yes. That's where they are. And we, so 25 to 34, 48%, and 18 to 24, 51% of them, just over half, think that it's justified because of Israel's treatment of uh, the Gaza Strip, what the, what the Hamas people did to Israeli civilians. So... If that poll is correct, we've got a cultural fissure in this country that is unmendable. Right. If if you literally have people, I mean, I used to think that you know Bill Maher he goes around in talking about how he's not religious and religion sucks and is responsible for all the wars, mm -hmm. but in fact he is religion. Climate change is his religion. Right. You know, he wraps and ties all his values into it, et cetera. He practices it, uh, you know, responsible, you know, climate treatment, this and that, et cetera, et cetera. So he does have an ideology. This would say, mean to us that not only is people of college-aged Americans, are they godless, as in the Judeo-Christian uh, foundational beliefs, mm -hmm. but... They, They're actually amoral. Uh, I, I would say they are certainly amoral, but they're enthusiasts for murder. <laughs> yeah, they're I mean, swept that's up pretty in extreme. a movement and belief. I mean, did you know that college kids now love rape and murder? I did not. These know that. are the people. Once again, these are the people. All the DEI people, where they have to be safe, and Ben Shapiro can't come and speak because it'll, it's violence to them, and they think this is. This is like great. This is like the Red Sox winning the World Series. Yeah, yeah. let's take to the streets. But then it literally at the is. same time, like the people that you would think would be like a little bit concerned about that are asleep at the wheel, seemingly. Like the ADL, who's their whole point mm -hmm. of the ADL, is it not about Jewish people and anti Semitism? Yes, it is. And like, so they tweeted out a whole thread a couple days ago. One week after Hamas's brutal terror attacks in Israel, white supremacists continue to rail against Israel and the Jewish community, gathering in cities nationwide to promote racist, anti-Semitic propaganda. The, on October 14th, the white supremacist White Lives Matter group held a number of demonstrations featuring anti-Semitic signs and common white supremacist tropes about Jewish control. Then they show a picture uh, of four people at a demonstration with White Lives Matter signs. The following images are snapshots from these demonstrations. You can read more about the network here. Here's two people holding a sign. Here's another protest with four people. Is this the biggest news in anti-Semitic protests over the last couple weeks? Um, Is this the most prominent example of anti-Semitism that the ADL could find over the last few weeks? Uh, I would think there would be some something else they might be looking into. You would think you would think the people, you know, ripping down posters of hostage Jewish children. You would think that the people, you know, chanting from the river to the sea everywhere, and you know, saying that they want to wipe Israel off the map. That that would be like a little bit more prominent. The people cheering, the the fact that the college campuses are full of people who apparently think it's great that a bunch of Israeli citizens were slaughtered. The fact that, you know, it, that 
400 staffers on Capitol Hill are writing anonymous letters saying they want to support Israel less right after Israel was a victim of a terror attack of this magnitude. The fact that the Secretary of State has to bow to a bunch of people in the State Department to, you know, not support Israel. The fact that after all that, the president is out here tweeting today saying, as Americans, we must come together and reject Islamophobia. It's just think today, today. And then in real life, Corinne Jean-Pierre is asked about this because there's clearly been a huge rise in anti-Semitism over the last few weeks because for some reason, Jewish people seem to be the only people who get murdered and it makes people mad at them. I don't, it's astonishing to me. It's astonishing to me that people can go out and murder a bunch of Jewish babies and like there's a bunch of people who that makes them dislike Jewish people more. But it, Yes, here's Corinne Jean-Pierre. Done, but there's definitely obviously been a rise in anti-Semitic speech, actions, demonstrations, clearly around the Level world and here. concern right now about the potential rise of anti-Semitism in light of everything that's going on in Israel. So a couple of things. Um, look, um, uh, we have not seen uh, any credible uh, threats. I know there's been always questions about uh, credible threats. Uh, and so... I no? just want to make sure Nothing? that that's out there. But look, uh, Muslim and those perceived. Uh, they haven't seen any credible threats. Well, the question was. There are Americans hostages right now. Yeah. Credible threats. And the question was the rise in anti Semitism. So right. it wasn't a threat of a terror attack, it was the fact that there's been a ton of anti Israel, anti quote Zionist really anti-Semitic right. protests across the country and across the world right now. Well, Nobody well, asked you about credible threats. If these protests, Alice, were populated by any small number of MAGA Republicans, do you think they might have heard about the the uh, anti-Semitism? Oh, House? yeah. The ADL has managed to find, like, three demonstrations yes. of four White Lives Matter white supremacists who don't like Jewish people yes. to talk about this. To be Muslim have endured a disproportionate uh, number Ronda of Muslims. fueled attacks. We're on to Cincinnati. We're on and to certainly Muslims. President Biden oh, understood uh, to be Muslim have endured a disproportionate uh, number of hate-fueled attacks. Uh, and certainly President Biden understands that many of our Muslim Arab Arab Americans and Palestinian American loved ones and neighbors are worried about the hate being directed at their communities, and that is something you've heard you the president this speak to in his uh, yeah. in his address uh, just last last Thursday. And so, uh, one of the things that the president has done is directed his team, uh, uh, Homeland Security team, to prioritize prevention uh, and disruption of any emerging threats that could harm the Jewish, the Muslim, uh, Arab Americans, or or any other communities. And that is something that the president has she added Jewish. sought to do. And, and yeah, since she's day like, one. oh right, they As did you know, ask the me about Jewish people on, at some point on, um, here on, you know, bringing, commu protecting communities, obviously, but bringing people together. Somebody should be so fired. The fact that they had in the Trapper Keeper something about anti... Islamophobia. Yeah. Somebody should be fired. Are you well, effing kidding me? And she's so dumb, she's not even able to, like, somehow twist the answer into sounding like it's an answer to the question. No, no. She just has, like, oh, anti-Semitism is hate. Let's see, I have an Islamophobia answer here. That's hate. So they say, like, there's been a rise in anti-Semitism. And she answers, I know the Muslims really are worried about hate attacks, so we're really protecting yes. Muslims. Oh, and Jews. Like, uh, uh, protecting the soul of the nation. Uh, and so... Um, Nobody asked about the soul the president of takes the nation. very, very seriously. Uh, and, um, you know, we're going to continue to denounce any sort of hate uh, towards any American here. Uh, no, why, so not why. We, it's not any American needs special protections. It's the people who were just massacred um, having to worry about kids running through the halls of high schools in California saying death to Israel, go Palestine from the river to the sea, and that people are saying it was are a celebrating. A it's a good thing that these Jews were massacred. What are is there a lot wrong of, with you? Are there a lot of Muslim schools that are having to pay to hire extra security right now at their schools? because they have threats coming in and they're dealing with this stuff. I mean, it's, amazing. it's on and on. The Jewish schools are dealing with a ton of this stuff. It's real. It's really happening. People that I know and talk to in the Jewish community are concerned and afraid. And, like, and you see stories about it all over the news. It's insane what's happening. And the idea that they cannot, that they cannot address it 
in any way other than to talk about Islamophobia is so disappointing and incredible. And, you know, I... I do go back and forth on this a little bit because I do understand the point of people saying, like, obviously it's not a surprise. Like, the Norm MacDonald Islamophobia joke has been around so long now. And it's like, why are you still surprised by it? Right? He has that line about, like, the thing I'm terrified of is if, you know, the Muslim terrorists got a nuke and dropped it on us, that all the Islamophobia against the peaceful Muslims. Right? right? So, which, it's clearly been a joke for a long time but you know it i find it interesting and i think what's shocking that it's stepped up to a new level is that jewish people used to be one of the protected groups yes one of the safe groups i mean i never would have expected them to necessarily be like we're looking out for christians or something you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like because i don't expect it of them but it is interesting to see how quickly they turned on the jewish community that really in the united states most of the jewish community is very progressive not not all of like the orthodox and ultra orthodox communities i mean there's clearly a strong strain of conservative thought in some jewish communities but for the most part Jewish people in the United States are very progressive and have been there for all the LGBT causes, all the Black Lives Matter causes, all these things. And, you know, seeing how quickly the left turns on them should be eye-opening for everybody, not just Jewish people. Right. Because it goes back to what we always talk about, that you cannot win trying to appease them. Right. It doesn't matter if you support all their causes and everything else. If they decide... That you're on the wrong side of something, or if they decide that you're living on the wrong land or whatever it is, it could be nothing. It could be something you did 20 years ago. You Mm -hmm. wouldn't even know. You know, they'll be happy to see you and your babies and your grandparents murdered. Yes. Like, that's... That's ultimately the big takeaway here for everybody, and right? And the, the media is culpable in all of this stuff, all of this stuff. So, for instance, we know in, in, in Connecticut there was a um, Moms for Liberty. Right. Um, a meeting in Avon, Connecticut. They came on my show to talk about it. Uh, a, a few of them, of the moms, um, you've met a couple of them. Right. And, you know, these are moms who didn't want to be going to Board of Ed meetings, but they now go to Board of Ed meetings. They don't want books about adults having sex with kids in kids' libraries. They don't want drag queens there. They don't want kids to be taken on secret gender journeys. So they had a Moms for Liberty meeting with right. James Lindsay. Um, and the, as the speaker and the, a huge amount of protesters showed up and they were yelling at them. They were just like kind of vicious. They had, they're, they're into like, they, they brought their signs that say, read books, don't ban them. It says, here's another book, yard sign. They brought kindness always let our kids be themselves and themselves is in pink. I was in rainbow. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. Let our kids be themselves. In other words, make the kids gay. Let, let me make your kid gay. That's exactly. what I mean. But listen to this. Here's the headline. This is mm-hmm. the news co- coverage in the Hartford Current, which if you're subscribed to, you should unsubscribe to immediately. It's rubbish. I recognize uh, this rubbish when I see it. I worked for the rubbish company at one time. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the Hartford Current. The coverage of the event, okay? Mm-hmm. It's a Moms for Liberty event. Where parents want to, you know, have some authority, uh, have some say in what their kids learn. And they don't want the kids to be sexed. And, like, Connecticut's had this problem with the pizza sex education they had right. and all sorts of other things. This is beautiful. Hartford Current. This is trash. Unsubscribe. Subscriber only. Okay. Ready? Ready. There's just no place for bigotry here. Parents, advocates, protest Moms for Liberty meeting in Connecticut. What a way to write a headline for something. Oh, so it's not about the meeting. It's about the protest. There's just no place for bigotry here. Protesters clad in prideful rainbows. Crowded outside the Avon Senior Center on Saturday afternoon to hand out free copies of banned books and rally against Moms for Liberty, a conservative political organization group. By the way. The protesters are not part of any groups, obviously. Moms for Liberty, a conservative political organization group, 
uh, that was meeting at the center, at the center. Moms for Liberty, which began as an anti-mask and anti-vaccine movement during the COVID-19 pandemic, denied the Hartford current entry into the event, which was vaguely advertised as a meeting in the Farmington Valley. The parental rights group, which often works to ban LGBTQ books and to keep critical race theory out of the classroom, has been growing. By the way, I think it's a mistake that they didn't let them in. Let them in, for God's sakes. I mean, they're going to trash it no matter what. So they're going right. to trash it without, you know, ha having anything from you. Uh, well, that's probably one of the reasons why they trashed them, which was vaguely advertised as a meeting in the Farmington Valley. The parental rights group, which often works to ban LGBTQ books and to keep critical race theory out of the classroom, has been growing rapidly in influence in conservative circles and the National Republican Party. The organization says its mission is to organize, educate, and empower parents to defend their parental rights at all levels of government. Called a potent force, a hate group, Moms for Liberty pushed further into Connecticut. It's the social issues and moral issues. They are emerging. Let me just quickly ask, are the people who are gung-ho for genocide in Israel, are they a hate group or just no. moms that don't want their kids seeing porn in school? Yep, no. Okay, it, the, just, these, checking. The, just checking. What law center was cited in this, Alice? The Southern Poverty <laughs> Absolutely. One? The Southern Poverty Law Center has labeled Moms for Liberty as an extremist in its views. These are literally moms. Mm -hmm. Moms for Liberty and its nationwide chapters combat what they consider woke indoctrination of children by advocating for book bans in school libraries and endorsing candidates for public office that align with the group's views. Imagine that. The Law Center uh, says on its website they also use their multiple social media platforms to target teachers and school officials. By the way, a bunch of the people who went to the meeting were doxxed by this group mm -hmm. of protesters. You know, I, our friend uh, who we talked to, uh, Alice Andrea, yep. who's another mom, has been uh, – le they left a threatening letter in her mailbox. Um, a bunch of trans uh, uh, drag queens did. Uh, they also use their multiple social media platforms to target teachers and school officials, advocate for the abolition of the Department of Education. You're not allowed to do that? That's hate. That's hateful, SPLC. Advance a conspiracy propaganda and spread hateful imagery and rhetoric against the LGBTQ community on Saturday. By the way, the SPLC is just rubbish. It's These are all great examples of uh, places where if they actually were interviewing you, which they're not, they're just writing whatever they want. But it would be the perfect time to take the Pierre Poilievre approach of saying, like what? <clears throat> like what? hateful imagery right it, like, i assume like what conspiracy theories right like you know examples anyone many local parents who came out to protest said they were shocked that the group was gathering in avon listen to this here's a well maybe it's because you told them that it's a hate group where it's actually just parents that here's don't a quote from here's school. a quote w from one of the parents when you read about things like moms for liberty you think more about red states not in your backyard said amber page gare Three last names, of course. Mm -hmm. A mother from Bristol. She said her nine-year-old son, who is on the autism spectrum, has been worried that his favorite books will be banned. Johnny has a man's penis in his hand is not one that I don't think <laughs> that, that her uh, little son should necessarily be the reading. The only ones that are being banned that are actually books that kids like or are classics mm -hmm. are the ones that the left is banning. Like To Kill a Mockingbird or... Dr. Seuss, or there, those are the ones, those are Roald Dahl, those are being literally taken out of print so that you right. can't get them anymore. Right. And people on the right are just like, maybe can we not have this book with a graphic depiction of a blowjob be in the middle school library? Right. So they can go find it. You can buy it for them online or something Alice. if you really want your kids seeing right. the blowjob book. Right. Like, what? We got to hear from another parent, okay? Okay. Uh,. Mm -hmm. Dana Barcelos Dash Allen, of course, three names of Avon said she and her wife Carrie Barcelos Dash Allen are worried their four-year-old son Cooper will grow up without books that reflect his own family. I am a newish parent, and he loves books, and he has a two-mom family. Said Dana Barcelos Allen, "We're talking about books that would really impact my son's family, my son's perception, and I don't want my son to be affected because he has a different kind of family." I think most families are different nowadays. God, this. Right. Plus, we're trying to celebrate the Hamas massacre. 
I want books celebrating that. This whole idea, he's not going to recognize. They're going to take away all the books that explain it. What the freak do you think happens here? First of all, the only reason the uh, other kid would be worried that his books that he loves are being ta taken is why? Because mom told him that mean people are trying to take away the books from you. Exactly. Exactly. Like uh, Bug the Pug or whatever that thing is my son loves. Right. They're, they're going to take your favorite kid's book. It's going away. The Barsalis Allen family moved to Avon from the San Francisco Bay Area eight years and purposely chose the Avon community. She doesn't want her son. This is, It's funny. We're spending a lot of time in this article on the Barsalis Allen family. She doesn't want her son to grow up in a place that stigmatizes his family. Uh, he, he loves... Oh, we, we, was that, we, are we, they trying to imply that like San Francisco was a place that... We moved to Avon because it was a lovely, accepting place, she said, and they wanted to stay that way for their son. He loves his mommies and our friends and community love us and our family, and I don't want to see that jeopardized, she said. I want to be there. I want there to be a conversation with love and kindness and inclusion as opposed to anything that involves shame. These freaking people are delusional. But that's why it's so important to get back to, like, exactly what we're talking about here. Like, mm -hmm. does it really impact your two-mom family if the middle schoolers can't read the comic book that has blowjobs depicted in it? Right. Like, is that okay? Like, you really, you need my kid to be exposed to image, imagery of sex acts. Yes. Because your your family has two moms? Not that this is... I don't understand what the connection is. Like, it's a free country. We, on purpose, live in a country where people are allowed to do things one group of people disagrees with. But, like, why do you need so badly yes. for the sex books we need to your, be in the school? We need your son to see the blowjobs as well. Yes, we need that. I need to be <laughs> like, I don't understand. That's right. I have why, hyphenated what last name, so I know do. best. I care more. And I care that your do. son needs to see blowjobs right now. Or I'll add a third hyphen, okay? <laughs> Standing by her side, another mom said that she raised three children in Avon, including two who are gay. Wow, what are the odds? My goodness. What are open-minded family that is then what that's really she's a really good person if she can manage to convert the third one here then she'll she will have run the table on virtue yay holding a sign that said not here in avon natalie queso said i'm tired of hate messages i have two gay children is this another one and i have two gay children and i want to be able to choose what i teach my kids go ahead yeah choose them that's go be my guest Teach them all to be gay, for all I care. I don't want other people to tell me how I can and cannot parent, Queso said. What? Yeah, that's... You'll find that you actually are saying the exact same things as the people inside the venue. This is the fabulous school system, but there's just no place for bigotry here. These people are so full of their own bullshit, you don't even know where to freaking start. It's amazing. Amazing. Um... Russell Codiel, who has a 16-month-old daughter, stood outside the Senior Avon Center holding a tall sign that said in bold letters, hate group meeting here today. Which is, of course, that's intimidating the people inside the group. Of course. Calling them a hate group, like the Proud Boys or the Klan right. or whatever, which is what it's meant to do because these are simply just mo concerned moms. Uh, hate group meeting here today. This feels so close to home, and that feels really scary, he said. You fucking pussy. God. Hold on. Let me mark that. God. So they're uh, scared of the other moms in their community getting together? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Claudel said he came out to protest the, to, to protest, to, quote, start using his voice now that he is a parent and to raise awareness about what Moms for Liberty stands for. Clydell said he worried that community members may not understand the intent behind the group Moms for Liberty. Uh, uh, behind the group Moms for Liberty. Mo he said Moms for Liberty is a uh, He says, yeah, that's right. He says Moms for Liberty is a very friendly or patriotic slogan name. Somebody may stumble into it and not know what it is. This coming from the same people who tell you you can't be against Antifa because it's just anti-fascist. Right. Well, how could you? If Are you for fascism? It's just, if you're anti-fascist, then you're in Antifa. He said the group is known to be anti-LGBTQ and divisive. They don't agree with us on everything. means yeah. divisive. Yeah. We're not divisive. The people who want to read your kids' 
sex ed books in the school library. We're not divisive. It's you who said that you want to be let know what your kid is reading in school. You're the divisive one. You're the problem. Those aren't things that I want here. I want us all to get along and send our kids to the same school and be happy, Claudia said. He used to be Claudil, and but now he's Claudia. Uh, Saturday's protest involved multiple local groups that advocate against hate. Tommy in New Hampshire says, Russell tool bag a-hole. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so the protests involve multiple groups that include against hate. Are you done? Hold on. We don't tolerate in this town. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, Barthel uh, said protesting against groups like Mom for for Liberty is directly aligned with the work she does to prevent violence and promote healthy communities. This is a doctor. Um, it's 100% in line with what we do for Moms Demand Action. When you have a group in town that's feeling persecuted, then you are creating hate in our town, she said. Hate starts here. It started with meetings like this, and you have to show up. Who is she? Okay. Uh, she was recently elected to the Avon Town Council as a Democrat running for re-election. We just don't tolerate this in our town, she said. We want everyone to feel welcome. No, not everyone. All kids to feel welcome in our schools. We want all families to move here to feel welcome. That means supporting everyone, she said, including teachers and librarians who need protection from book bans and kids and teens by making sure they have access to a diverse range of books and are being taught the whole spectrum of history. <sighs> Let me just see if there's any another quote here. No, anyway, you get it. Yeah. Uh, Trump was in New Hampshire today. Quick before we jump to the Chelsea Fire Wicked Hotline. There's not too many. I think there's just one. Um. Well, the one the one that people were talking about was that he called Orban the um, head of Turkey, which he's the head of Hungary. But I I don't care about that so much. But it, there's there a just, good one that you. There was one little cut that I just thought was funny because Trump is so. Yes, funny talking about on the spectrum. He... I just picked that up. This is on our business. Why are you doing that? He said, uh, Macron. Nice guy. You know, look, he's for France. I'm for, I'm for us. I'm for us. You know how you spell us, right? You spell us, U.S. I just picked that up. Has anyone ever thought of that? I just picked that up. <laughs> it's like a conversation with your stoner friend. You ever yes. noticed? And I said, you know, if you think about it, us equals U.S. Is, isn't that... Now, if we say something genius, they'll never say it. You know, we get <laughs> for a guy with eighty-six indictments. He is not afraid to let his mind travel. <laughs> By thirty, forty, fifty, eighty thousand, a hundred thousand people to speeches. They'd never said Trump's a great speaker. Never said. I've never heard it. I said to my people, "Do you think they'll ever acknowledge I must be doing okay? Uh, except I'm a very handsome person, so I guess a lot of you want to sit. They want to sit and look at me because I'm so like a beauty pageant." No, it's amazing. It does make you wonder exactly like where, what a wild ride some of his cabinet meetings must have been. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? I mean, I'm just as he said, he told people not to vote again. I did see that floating around there too. They just said the voting doesn't matter. Watch when they're counting the votes at night. I mean, I get the point. I don't think he's literally telling people not to vote. Here's a Biden moment. I apologize. I have to go to the situation room. I'm very ashamed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He sounds good. Yeah, I mean, and that's concerning. The Sorry, I have to go to the Situation Room for another issue that I have to deal with. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, Axios was reporting, too, that, uh, that officials they're talking to behind the scenes are concerned about overseas conflicts. Never before. This is a column from Axios CEO Jim Vandehei and mm -hmm. co-founder Mike Allen. Never before have we talked to so many top government officials who in private are uh, worried about so many overseas conflicts at once. We don't like to sound dire, but to sound a siren of clinical clear-eyed realism, U.S. officials say this confluence of crises poses epic concern and historic danger. Behind the scenes, officials tell us that inside the White House, this was the heaviest, most chilling week since President Biden took office just over a thousand this days ago. 
Former Defense Secretary Bob Gates, who ran the Pentagon under presidents of both parties, George Bush and Barack Obama, tells us America is facing the most crises since World War II ended 78 years ago. He explains a White House system overload like this. There's a gigantic funnel that sits over the table in the Situation Room, and all the problems in the world end up coming through the funnel to the same 8 or 10 people. There's a limit to the bandwidth those 8 or 10 people can have. Not one of those crises can be solved and checked off. All five could spiral into something much bigger, so they cite Israel's response to the Hamas terror attack which seems like not is that how you'd phrase that crisis no israel's response to the hamas terror attack but anyway the stuff that's going on in israel and gaza anyway is one that they cite uh vladimir putin meeting with china this week he also had a health scare supposedly too there's rumors that he had a problem a health issue uh which could cause instability of its own militia uh, malicious iran the question of how involved Iran was in orchestrating the Hamas attack, mm -hmm. uh, Kim Jong Un and his testing of long range nuclear missiles, uh, and a new weapon is being deployed in all these conflicts. The massive spread of doctored or holy fake videos to manipulate what people see and think is and think in real time. The architects of the technologies, blah blah blah, fake videos, bots, fake people, fake written content, etc. So I don't really see that they need to list that as a separate threat per se but anyway um the state department's concerned apparently the people behind the scene i mean like i'm concerned there's a lot of stuff going on and biden is clearly not up to the job of handling it we no. didn't have this problem under trump right um so um yeah i guess we'll see what happens but it's not a great Outlook. Um, on the baby name front, you've been getting support for Peter Rabbit. Which Absolutely. I like Here Rabbit as a nickname, but I'm not for... I. <sighs> Although I might be more leaning towards Peter Robinson, which is our five-year-old's yeah. choice. You're almost there, Alice. You got the R. <laughs> Make the move. And then uh, John and Greenwood, who's chaotic evil, is saying Rabbit Peter on Twitter. <laughs> which... Um, yeah, but I, I don't mind Rabbit as a nickname. Maybe but you imagine that, Rabbit Shelly? What a dynamo that would be. We had a cricket when I went to high school. A cricket? Yeah. She was, everybody loved her. She was a girl cricket? Yeah, she was a girl cricket. Everybody loved cricket. Hmm. Interesting. Well, hopefully we're getting close here, so weigh in with your name takes now yes. because... You're about to run out of time, I feel. This is our one and only chat chat message. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hubby V's Les again. There's something hey. else I want to say. Sure. As someone who has spent many, many, many years um, around the toxic culture of Islam Ooh. from overseas, imported overseas into the United States with my, uh, we'll just call them extended family, None of this shocks me at all. None of what they did in Israel shocks me at all for their God-willed purposes, right? Mm -hmm. This is a culture and a religion that has no limiting principle, no moral values outside their own, no fear of lying, no accountability of dishonesty. Their end game is their end game, and it is, in fact, a culture of death. And I spent many, many years among it, not in my family, but in an extended, a very, very close associates to me. And Tom and Alice know a lot about this. Yes. And I am very, very happy to discuss this because my experience with just one little anecdotal experience of my life shows me that this is literally normalcy the this is the mainstream of that culture and it's that's why it makes me more absolutely sick and disgusted that what we see in the united states sub, among brainwashed fools or true nazis supports that love you bye thank you Thanks, uh, leslie. leslie yeah i mean this, this i have never been more shocked at my country than i have in the last couple of weeks i can't believe it I can't believe it, it comes with the with the Ukraine Yalan Lan sign that you suddenly hate the Jews now. It, that's like w w seems crazy. Holy frig! What a time! What a time! This is just it's. Uh, I don't know, but this I did not see this happening. Congratulations, progressives, especially those who are college age. You have managed to surprise me when I thought you couldn't be any worse. 
Oh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Hopefully we'll have great news for you soon about um, a baby being born. I'm looking forward to that. And thank you again, Tom, for my old base seasoning sauce. You're welcome, Alex. Thank you. I mean, what more could a girl ask for in life? Um, you can if you want to join us for the live streams and the live chat. That's patreon.com slash burnbarrel. Otherwise, burnbarrelpodcast.com is where to leave messages and listen for Say free. La vie.